there's a bit of an analogue revolution going on at Porsche. No other company has embraced with quite the same gusto that pleasure isn't necessarily linked to downforce and lap times. Manual gearboxes, more slippery shapes, less weight, all these things help the car bond with you rather than constantly straining at the leash. First came the Cayman GT4, then the 911R, then the 911 GT3 with an optional manual gearbox. And now there's two more so-called back to basic 911s to add to that list. And here they are, our two analog flavored 911s, but from quite different ends of the Porsche spectrum. Over here, that 85 grand Carrera T, a homage to the Monty winning Carrera T from the 60s, essentially a raw, slightly lighter version of the Bogo 911. And here, the 111 grand GT3 MIT Touring Pack, a wingless, manual-only version of the GT3 designed to make 911R speculators look a little bit silly. We begin with the GT3 Touring Pack. Gone is the rear wing and you can only have a manual gearbox and that's about it. But all the best bits from the GT3 are still here. So you get the 493 brake, four litre naturally aspirated flat six that revs to 9,000 RPM. Four wheel steering and the GT3's wider body, lower chassis and wheels. Inside you can only have leather, no racy Alcantara here and no optional club sport pack either with its roll cage and fire extinguisher. So less racetrack, more French Riviera in feel, but this is still a massively quick car. 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds and a 196 miles per hour top speed. First things first, we need to talk about that Touring Pack name. It comes from a spec that was offered on the Carrera RS back in the 70s, so it's got the heritage, but it's probably a little bit misleading. Just deleting the rear spoiler and making a manual gearbox compulsory does not make this thing any more of a continent crusher. What it does do is make it look so much cooler, to my eyes at least. It's so much more stealthy, flies under the radar. Only people in the know will know just how special this car is. The manual gearbox, it's absolutely superb. It's tight, it's mechanical, it's only got six ratios actually, and that's because Porsche's GT department refused to use a seven-speed manual. Good on them, I say, because seven speeds is probably one ratio too many. And then we come to the engine, which we already know from the standard GT3 is a thing of wonder. In fact, we recently gave it our Engine of the Year award on Top Gear magazine. But in case you didn't know, well, I better demonstrate just what makes this power plant so, so special. That, ladies and gentlemen, is 9,000 RPM. 500 RPM more than you get from a 911R. Ha! What I don't want to do is focus on any one specific component. They're all brilliant in their own right. But what makes this car so good is the way they meld together. They work together and form this cohesive whole. For example, the meaty steering works really well with the mighty brakes down there and the suspension, well, it doesn't fight the road surface, it doesn't crash around, it flows along and breathes with you. What you get is a sense of solidity and immense capability. At no point though, does this car feel intimidating. It's on your side, it's your friend, it wants you to do well. Of course, if you want to poo yourself, then you can always get a GT2 RS. But for the rest of us that don't like pain, and prefer driving on normal roads as opposed to racetracks, well, this is quite a thing. A tall order then for the more junior Carrera T, but as I said earlier, today isn't about raw numbers and performance, it's more about pleasure and putting one of these on my face. The 
T here stands for touring, but this isn't a softened off Carrera, it's more of a lightweight special. It uses the same 365 brake, three litre turbo flat six as the base Carrera, but gets a mechanical diff, 20 mil suspension drop, and sports exhaust as standard, while the seven speed manual gearbox has shorter ratios and a shorter stick. Throwing out the back seats and some sound insulation, thinner rear windows, and making the radio and sat nav optional, although you can add them back in at no extra cost, has saved 20 kilograms. That means the 0 to 60 time drops by a tenth to 4.5 seconds, 4.2 if you go for the PDK option, which you absolutely should not, and a 180 miles per hour top speed. So does 30 grand and 130 horsepower less make this an inferior car? Well, no, not by the criteria that we're using today. Yes, the GT3 has its party piece, it's 9,000 RPM engine, but actually this thing has a smaller turbocharged engine, so you get more torque lower down, and really it punches just as hard on the tight, narrow roads in the south of France that we're driving around on today. In terms of sound, well, that exhaust does make some quite juvenile pops and crackles. Sounds a little bit synthetic, but I dare you to try and drive through a tunnel and not put your windows down. Overall then, this car, the Carrera T, well, it feels smaller, it feels lighter, it feels daintier than the GT3. A lot closer then to 911s of old. Question is, can I feel that 20 kilogram weight saving? No. Can I hear the reduced sound deadening in the back? No. Is this manual gearbox good? Yes, it's absolutely excellent. But if I'm honest, perceiving those slightly shorter ratios is quite tricky. What this car is then is a really clever piece of spec manipulation designed to serve this fashion for more analog sports cars. But please don't be put off because, hey, when was it ever a crime to give customers exactly what they wanted? Right, so which one is our winner? Well, it's a hell of a lot closer than I thought it was gonna be. The truth is, I got much more confident, much quicker in the Carrera T. And let's not forget, you could buy a hot hatch with the change. But even when it was hampered on squidgy winter tires, you can just tell there's more magic in the GT3's bones, which is why that's where my money would go. But other manufacturers, please take note. Sports cars and supercars aren't just about headlines and numbers and performance figures. It's about the squidgy human sitting in the middle, controlling them. And right now, I'm one very happy human indeed.